What does Quentin Tarantino's highest grossing film, a B-movie film noir, and American mid-century staycation escapism all have in common? The answer? A popular cocktail once thought lost to time until its rediscovery of its secret ingredients in 2007. The Pearl Diver. This week we are on holiday, we're taking vacation, chilling out a little bit, and we're looking at the Pearl Diver cocktail whilst discussing a couple movies in which it makes an appearance in along the way. This week we are doing Tiki. The Pearl Diver cocktail was a really popular cocktail uh, back in the old high days of Tiki. The Pearl Diver was invented sometime in 1937 by one of the old Tiki gurus, Don Beach, and served in his restaurant, Don the Beachcomber. The drink has since been lost to time somewhere between then and 2007 when the drink was brought back and repopularized by Jeff Beachbaum Berry when he revealed and revised uh, the secret ingredient, uh, Gardenia Mix. But we're also here to talk about the cocktail's appearance in Quentin Tarantino's film Django. Uh, if you will recall, there's a scene in the film in which Leonardo DiCaprio's character orders a drink which he calls a Polynesian Pearl Diver. And he says to do not spare the rum. Roscoe, a beer for the man with the beard, and I will have a Polynesian Pearl Diver, do not spare the rum. This is a bit of a historical anachronism because, as we just discussed, the drink was first served around 1937, and Django takes place in 1858, possibly going into the early 1860s. So, way before the drink, or drinks even within a proxy to that, would have been invented. So, uh, what I believe Tarantino was doing in this scene was making a reference to a film noir, uh, the film Blue Guardian, which was released in 1953, in which a character played by Raymond Burr orders a drink called the Polynesian Pearl Diver and do not spare the rum. Now that's the dinner. On the drinks, Polynesian Pearl Divers and don't spare the rum. What I don't think Tarantino was doing uh, by having Monsieur Condé order a Polynesian Pearl Diver was making reference to the golden era of cocktails, which was around, you know, the 1860s when this film was set. You know, because um, these cocktails in the golden era, they had all manners of spirits, liqueurs, mixers, juices. They were, in many ways, tiki drinks. Um, because that kind of formulation, really complicated, you know, 12 ingredient cocktails, sort of went away in the intervening years between the golden age of cocktails and tiki due largely to prohibition when these ingredients were really hard to get so they were super scaled down it's like three ingredient drinks like the sidecar and the bee's knees etc 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 so rather than referencing that i think what tarantino was doing was making reference to blue gardenia i don't really think tarantino knows that much about cocktails and its history and culture but joe i hear you say didn't you say this cocktail was lost to time and wasn't rediscovered until 2007 what could you possibly mean by that? Well, gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Well, back in the day, the old tiki pioneers Don Beach and Trader Vic were super secretive about their recipes and what went into their drinks, and the Pearl Diver was no exception. And what made this drink so unique was something Don Beach called Gardenia Mix, which I've made up some here, and this contains, in fact, no gardenias. Um, I think that was largely to throw off people who were perhaps trying to find out what went into the drink because it was, after all, so popular. But what it does contain, and what Jeff Beach Bombay revealed to us in 2007, is honey, butter, allspice jam, cinnamon syrup, and vanilla syrup. If uh, the inclusion of butter uh, is an issue for you, then I've made several other videos in which you can try the drinks from those ones instead. Uh, for the rest of you, we are going to chug a ton of butter. Uh, so anyway, let's get down to making the drink. Um, I've seen a couple versions of this recipe uh, throughout the internet, but what I'm gonna do now is, uh, this is the one which seems to be uh, recurring the most often. So let's get down to making the drink. We are going to need a cocktail shaker, and to start us off, we will need one ounce of orange juice. and then we are going to need three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Then we are going to need uh, two bar spoons of something called velvet falernum. 
Uh, the florin in which you will see most people use is John D. Taylor's. In fact, I've never seen anyone else use anything but this one. This is a liqueur used in many tiki drinks. Really unique stuff, never really tasted anything like it. I don't even know what I could equate it to. But we're gonna need two bar spoons of it anyway. And then we're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of our gardenia mix, uh, really the centerpiece uh, to this whole thing. Uh, we're gonna need half an ounce of Jamaican rum. I'm gonna go with my Appleton Estate. Uh, we're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of Demerara rum. Then the recipe calls for one and a half ounces of a Puerto Rican rum, or Jeff Beach Bromberry says a Cuban rum is also okay. Um, I'd kind of already gone over budget by the time it came to get Puerto Rican rum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split that base instead. I'm going to do half of a Cuban light rum, and then I'm just going to use a blended aged rum that's not too funky. But uh, if you can get a Puerto Rican rum like Bacardi Gold, then definitely go for that. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so now we're gonna shake this drink and we're going to serve it up. Uh, now, many people will all already know this, but a pearl diver actually has its own specialty glass that it's supposed to be served in. Uh, these are made by the Cocktail Kingdom in the United States, and it would cost an absolutely absurd amount for me to just ship one over from there. Um, but what I did find was uh, these glasses, which sort of look similar to the base of a pearl diver glass. And um, I just thought this was like a really nice approximation uh, of that glass. So we're gonna serve it up in this. And I'm just gonna open pour this. So this is a really famous tiki drink, it's uh, quite a big time one so it's going to call for quite an elaborate garnish I think, so we're going to start it off with some pineapple fronds. And the reason I'm leaving a little bit of volume uh, just here is just so I've got some room to stick these in. Uh, it's also going to call for an orchid. And then I'm going to stick a straw in that. Oh, uh, actually, what I might do is, here we go. Uh, so there you have it, uh, the Pearl Diver. Uh, not quite the way that you see it in Django, but it's not even a real drink by that point anyway. Um, and you can just see this level of like emulsified butter uh, on the top of it. So uh, let's give it a try. Oh my God, holy shit. That is so good. Oh my god. That is just like, that is just the most decadent, rich drink I think I've ever had. Uh, that's quite incredible. Um, yeah, this was definitely Don Beach's take on a hot buttered rum, which is, uh, I think that's an old pre-prohibition era, you know, kind of pick me up like heartwarming drink. This is like the opposite. It's kind of got all those comforting features that just cool you down on like a nice summer's day uh, in the middle of a vacation. I mean, oh God, that is just excellent. Uh, anyway, I should probably tell you actually what it tastes like. Um, that Jamaican rum, and there just that little bit of the Appleton Estate actually really comes through. You definitely get that Jamaican rum funk in there. Uh, the Demerara rum, and uh, the bit of the uh, aged rum, which I put in there as well to kind of compensate for the lack of the uh, Puerto Rican gold. That gives it like a really solid base, like you get these uh, really nice rum notes and they're really at the center of everything. You know, you can definitely tell that, but it's not overpowering in the slightest. It's just really holding together that orange juice and that lime 
they're playing so nicely together. The real kind of star of the show here is the gardenia mix. The allspice in there, the uh, vanilla and cinnamon, are definitely present, which kind of give it this nice, this nice little twist. And without a shadow of a doubt, <laughs> the butter and the honey in there. Fantastic mouthfeel. It just kind of coats your lips and in the inside of your mouth ever so slightly and just brings this feature of complete decadence. Uh, <laughs> this is quite an excellent drink. So thank you to Don Beach and Trader Vic for that intense competition which necessitated the creation of this utterly fantastic tiki cocktail, which is going to be excruciatingly difficult to not drink all on my own. So thank you for joining me uh, on this episode of In The Drink. Uh, my name is Joe and I've had an absolutely fantastic time uh, making this episode. An even better time drinking this cocktail and I really hope you make this too. Um, I know the Gardenia mix um, might be a little bit off-putting as a little bit more of an involved step, but uh, it really doesn't actually take that long to make if you've got all the ingredients. Um, the cinnamon syrup and vanilla syrup in there are super easy to make as well um, and recipes for those are, are very readily available online. So I would highly recommend you go and make this um, because you'll also need this for my Golden Idol episode. Thanks once again for tuning in to In The Drink. Uh, as always, I've had a fantastic time making this cocktail and this show and I really hope you've had a great time watching it. Uh, please tune in again to our show next week and I will see you then. Thank you.